Want to change careers and go through a programming boot camp? Yeah. Well, do you want to know how to be successful while you do it? Yeah. Stick around and I'll tell you how. What's up, everyone? If you're new to the channel, my name is James Q. Quick, and I put out uh, weekly videos on web development related topics. And I just so happened to have finished teaching a boot camp, my second round at a boot camp called Launch Code. I did the first round in Memphis a little over a year ago, year and a half ago. And then uh, we just finished our second round with a group that's in Northwest Arkansas, all virtually, which is really interesting. And as much teaching as I've done, even before boot camps, but especially in boot camps, there's five specific things that I noticed that people that are successful in boot camps do to be successful. And I want to share those tips with you here. So let's start off with number one. That's 11. One, which is to build your support system. One of the biggest things that people going through boot camps that you, if you go through a boot camp, will face is uh, the feeling of being isolated, the feeling of being alone combined with imposter syndrome. We're not used to not understanding something. Most people, as they take programming boot camps, have been away from school for a while. They're not really used to struggling to understand things. Probably the things that you've been doing have become natural to you. And you haven't maybe been challenged in a while. And a boot camp is one of the absolute biggest challenges that you can ever go through. I can tell you from my side, I have so much uh, appreciation for people who go through boot camps because of how difficult it is. But the important part of this is that you're not alone. Like you've got however many people are in your cohort that are going through the same thing. You got however many people on uh, Twitter and Discord and Slack that have gone through this before. And you've got that many more people who are just interested and want to be in the position that you're in if you're already in a boot camp. So the thing that's really important is to build up your support system. Make relate build relationships with the people that are in your class. Build relationships with your professor, with your TAs. Make sure that you have people that you can reach out to, that you can ask questions to, because I promise you, it's going to be really hard for you to do those things when you feel like it's just you. If you feel like you're the only one that doesn't understand something, if you're the only one that uh, missed a lecture, if you're the only one that didn't complete a homework assignment, trust me, it's not just you. It's everyone in the class. I can't tell you how many times someone has expressed, oh, I just feel nervous or unsure, or I feel like I don't understand anything. As that person speaks up and shares that, the rest of the room is like, yep, me too. Everyone in this position is going to have struggles throughout the programming bootcamp. Build up your relationship, build up your network, build up your support system, people that you can reach out to, people that you can talk to, people that you can trust in a safe space to help you get through the program. All right, number two, this is kind of an extension of this, is to be visible and ask questions. Let's start with the actual, the ask questions part. So Again, going back to the idea of imposter syndrome, you will likely feel terrified to ask a question to something you think you should know. Here's the problem, though. If you feel like you should know something at this step and you don't ask that question then and then things build on top of that, you're getting further and further behind. Not asking questions is a negative snowball effect that's going to hold you down and it's going to make it very hard for you to complete the program and be successful in your boot camp program. So ask questions constantly. Again, if you have that support system, it doesn't have to be the instructor directly. It doesn't have to be a TA directly. It could be other classmates. But you should force yourself to ask questions when you have them. Trust me, I've been in a college computer science program where I felt like I didn't know what the hell was going on. And I kind of shrunk in my chair when the professor was looking for people to ask questions to. And I shrunk in my chair and felt defeated when I had questions that I was too nervous to ask. Trust me, no matter how nervous you get, no matter how dumb you feel, that's not how I feel, that's how you feel, no matter how bad that gets, you have to ask questions. Now, the additional benefit of this, uh, preventing that snowball, making sure that you're understanding things, getting questions addressed that you have constantly, the additional benefit to this, the more questions you ask, the more visible you are. Now, this is not like I'm not asking you to go out there and be the person who's singing karaoke or like dancing on camera or anything like that. Like you don't have to have a huge personality. You don't have to consider yourself to be an extrovert. You don't consider you don't have to consider yourself to have a loud voice that you really enjoy talking. But asking questions raises your visibility. If people ask me questions as an instructor, I know they're engaged. I know they care. And it also gives me a little bit of understanding of where they are. That way, when I have conversations with that person one on one, I know maybe, hey, I, there's some extra things that I need to address with that person to help get them caught up. Or 
I now say, oh, I, the based on the question they're asking, I know they have a solid foundation here and we can move on to the newer stuff. Gaining that visibility is super important for that level of awareness for yourself, for the TA, for the instructor. And then also when you think about as job opportunities come across my desk or in my email or in your TA's emails, I'm going to remember the people that I see on camera if it's virtual, uh, the people that raise their hand in class, the people that ask questions and participate. I'm going to remember those people. I'm not saying that this is a requirement. You don't have to be outspoken. You don't have to raise your hand every day. But the more you do, the more comfortable you'll feel asking questions, the more questions you will have that are answered, which is a good thing, the better you'll be in terms of not falling behind and the more visibility I will have as an instructor to you and your abilities, especially when job opportunities come along. Number three here is to focus on the concepts. This is something that I stress all the time when I'm teaching. It's really easy as you learn something new to get really bogged down in specific syntax. Oh, I have to put this word here. I have to do this thing. If it's Java, I have to create a class and I have to have a main and I have to have all these things, right? At the end of the day though, those things conceptually are almost not any different from any other language or any other framework that's out there. Now you can at me, you can comment below. Obviously people are gonna disagree with this to a certain extent because there are some differences, but I promise you, if you understand the high level concepts of object oriented programming in Java, you're going to understand the high level concepts programming or high level object oriented programming concepts in C sharp. If you understand how a web server work, what endpoints and routes are and how you configure those and how they respond to requests in Java Spring Boot, which is what we did, you'll understand how to do that in any other framework. A couple of examples. In my class, I showed as we were doing Java Spring Boot back end for a web server, I also showed a node and express server. Here's where the endpoints are. Here's how they respond. Different syntax does the exact same thing. Another example at work, we have a product internal project that uses nest JS for another backend in JavaScript looks almost the exact same as Spring Boot does in Java does the exact same thing. I promise you, if you focus on concepts, you will be much better off and you'll be much more prepared as you find job opportunities that use a language that you don't know or a framework that you've never used. You can confidently say, I really understand how these concepts work in this framework. I'm sure I can learn that one. I promise you, when I walked into my job at FedEx, I hadn't written a line of Java in like four or five years. And I got in and I kicked ass in Java because I understood the concepts and I knew how to apply them. And I could go, you can go and Google any specific syntax you need. Trust me, focus on the concepts, walk away with how the pieces fit together. I promise you, you can understand any language framework technology that comes along in the future. Four is going to be maybe a little contradictory. Four is to understand every line of code. Now, while I said you need to focus on concepts, you need to know how pieces fit together, you also need to understand as you write code or if you copy and paste code, you need to understand what every line of code does. I've seen this so many times and I've done this myself, I promise. In a, a homework assignment or something, you know you've done some things in the past and so you go and grab like, oh, here's this thing, let's see if this works. No, let's go grab this thing, let's see if this works. No, grab this thing, okay, that works and then you move on, right? It's so easy to do that, but as you do that, you need to take some time for yourself to think about what does every line of code do? And I think people forget this. It sounds really cliche. It sounds really simple, but every single line of code that you write has a purpose. I promise you it does, even if you don't realize it at the time. So dissect your code as you write code, as you read code, as you copy and paste in code, make sure that you're trying to understand each different piece of code as you go forward. Now, do you have to memorize those lines of code? No, that's that goes back to understand concepts, right? If you can understand concepts, you can break those down into here's what I need to accomplish, then go find the specific lines of code that do those things. Just make sure as you get those lines of code, as you write or copy them, make sure that you understand exactly what they're doing for you so that you can kind of almost like top down to then down top. Like you understand concepts to execute with lines of code, understand lines of code to reinforce your concepts, if that makes sense. All right, the last tip I have for being successful here is to use outside resources. Now, as an instructor, I would love for my voice and my instruction to be the only resource that you need to be absolutely 100% successful in this bootcamp. 
but that couldn't be further from the truth. And I consider myself a really good instructor. I do lots of videos. I've taught in a lot of different capacities, but my voice is only my voice. My perspective is only my perspective. My interpretation of things is only my interpretation. My explanation of things is only my explanation. As hard as I work to try to customize that to an individual and to a class and adapt based on feedback that I get, I'm still only one person in one voice. What you need at some times is lots of people and lots of voices. Best resource that you can ever leverage is YouTube. As I'm teaching concepts about like introduction to JavaScript, for example, as you hear about that in class and you're a little fuzzy on some of the parts, go and Google introduction to JavaScript and go hear it from someone else. Go see the demo from someone else. Go do the explain or hear the explanation from someone else. When I'm learning a new technology or when I'm looking for an answer to a problem, I swear, I go to YouTube, I search, I watch one video, I go back, I watch another video, I go back, I watch another, like four or five videos on the exact same topic so I can hear it explained from different pieces. And not only is the explanation different, the actual code that's shown might be different too. Like the examples that are used are different. And I promise you, you will need extra additional resources in addition to just a textbook if you have that for class and what your instructor and your TA say. You need more than that. You need more voices. So don't be afraid to Google, especially after you finish a boot camp. continue your learning process, continue to build stuff, continue to Google, continue to take online uh, courses if you have access to those, but make sure you have additional resources than just an instructor's voice and just a textbook to make things click for you. All right, if you had been looking to get into a bootcamp, hopefully this is a video that can help you feel a little bit more confident on what you need to do to be successful. If you're in the middle of a bootcamp and you're feeling good or you're not feeling so good, hopefully these five things can help you feel a little bit better. If you have already finished a bootcamp, hopefully you can resonate and say, yes, these things actually make sense. So let me know in the comments, do these tips make sense for you? And if you have any other tips for people that are looking to go through a bootcamp, put them in the comments below. As always, thanks for checking it out and I'll catch you in the next one.